this meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. Well, uh, Sanji, can you do a roll call? Yes. Norman Barker? Here. Cheryl Bigelow? Here. Judy Bory? Here. Cheryl Hall? Here. Pam Kraus? Here. Vivian Reiske is absent. And Vera Walters? Here. We have a quorum. Great. Thank you. Uh, can I get a motion to accept the agenda? I move we accept the agenda. I second that. Do I hear a second? Here's roll call, please. Robin Barker? Yes. Cheryl Bigelow? Yes. Judy Bory? Yes. Cheryl Hall? Yes. Pam Krause? Yes. Vivian Reiske is absent. And Vera Walters? Yes. The motion passes. All right, uh, next uh, request, um, I need to get everybody, or I'm sorry, let me let me restart. I'd like an acceptance of the minutes from our last meeting on November 17th. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes? I move we accept the minutes for November 17th, 2022 regular meeting. I second it. Uh, Santi, roll call. Robin Barker? Yes. Cheryl Bigelow? Yes. Judy Bory? Yes. Cheryl Hall? Yes. Pam Krause? Yes. Vivian Reisky is absent. And Vera Walters? Yes. All right. Motion passes. Is there any call to the public? We have no public. Okay. How about any correspondence and communications? We do not. Okay. Well, then let's move on to the library report. Okay. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, President Hall and uh, board members, Pam Harrison, library director. I want to start the librarian's report tonight talking a little bit about our, um, our stats for the last few months. I'm going to skip over November and December. They are in your packet. Um, they were pretty um, normal for what we have seen in the past year. Um, skipping ahead, though, to last month, January 2023, we did see, um, as we normally do in January, an increase um, in some of our numbers. Um, we have a couple of them here highlighted. Um, E-content was up quite a bit this past uh, month, which is great. We have a lot of great E-content resources that we're um, diligently trying to uh, publicize and market, so hopefully those um, uh, those efforts are being um, successful. And then you'll see also that our totals are quite high for all of our different um, checkouts. Everything from books being higher, um, our seed li library has exploded in the last month, um, and everything was up just across the board. So I just wanted to highlight that for the month of January. Something special that we have this month is a patron visit comparison um, from the year of 2021 that is in the dark green versus the 2022 calendar years. So these are just patron visits. That's people that are actually coming through our door. And as you can see from the percentages, um, every month, was higher in the past year than it was in 2021, which is great. It shows that we're bouncing back slowly from COVID. Uh, the only months that we did not see a, an increase would be November, which was very slight. And then for June and July, we started counting our vi visits differently in 2022 than we did in 2021. Um, and that's because of our annual report that we present to you at the end of June. Um, in the past, we would cut off June mid-month and then add the rest of the June, like the latter half of June to July. So that is why July is so high um, in 2021. And last year it was down because um, the light green bars are actually the actual patron visits for those months. So that is kind of some skewed data, um, but all in all, everything is looking like it's increasing. Pam, how are you counting these people? So these are people that actually come through the doors or come to our drive up. How do you count them through the oh, doors? Do you have a counter on We the do. Oh, okay. So yeah, every time you come into the library, uh, regardless of which door it is, our security gates at th those entrances, they um, have counters on okay. them. So yeah, we, okay. we uh, aggregate those and that is where we get our totals from. Thank you. Yeah, good question. 
Are there any other questions about the patron visit comparison from the last two years? I don't understand why July. Could you explain that again? Uh, sure. So uh, um, you've been on the board now for quite a while. So you know, in the end of July, we always have our special library board meeting where I present the annual report for the right. year. Well, in 2021, we, we, have, we did what we have done for years in the past. We would get to like June 15th, and then we would stop counting the data for the rest of that month so that we could progress with the annual report and get our numbers firm for the report. Last year, we decided to not do that, and I'm not exactly Cut it off at May. We cut it, yeah. Of May. We cut it off at the end of May, so that way the months are true to what they really are. So when you got the annual report this past year, all of that data was only up through May. Oh, I see. And so when you get the report next year or this year, it'll actually be from June through this May. Okay. So that's why there's that difference. Thank you. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little complicated, but <laughs> all in all, the um, I'm pretty sure that our totals for, uh, for June and July, if we looked at them um, side by side with the way that we, at the, at the same way that we would count them, um, they would be approximately the same. So any other questions about the comparison chart? I just think it's interesting to look at those things every once in a while just to see what direction we're, we're heading. Of course, we're always trying to get more people through the door, more, more circulations, um, and that's well, why we're so adamant about talking about marketing a lot because, of course, that is what leads to those outcomes. So we'll be excited to talk about that when we get to the um, agenda item on that. All right, I do not have this. Okay, so progressing now with the librarian's report. Sorry about that. Nice snowy picture. I guess that's what it looks like in Flagstaff, or it did at least. Uh, one of the things that we did um, back in January, it was actually Friday, January 13th, Friday the 13th, we had another one of our story walk night walks. Um, the story was changed the, um, the day of that event so that it was a fresh story for all the kids and families to enjoy. And the book was called The Little Snowplow Wishes for Snow. Um, so here is a picture of a family enjoying that story um, with their flashlights and they have all sorts of um, crafts and activities for the kids to participate in that uh, revolved around the snow theme. We had 72 in attendance for that event and um, at the last meeting, we did talk about what the schedule would be like for the next year for the story walk. And the dates for those are going to be uh, January, which was for this one. Um, May 2023 will be the next story. And then the last story of the year is in September. And then we'll repeat again the following year. And a lot of that has to do with the weather. It's really hard to go out in the in the heat in the summer and change out that story walk. It is a pretty physical job. The frames have to be taken apart. Uh, the new story is loaded. It's, and there's 18 different uh, frames to change. So um, that's why they decided to do it in May and then wait until September for the next story. You may have noticed if you came into the library within the last month that we have new chairs in the teen space, and this is what they look like. Um, I actually um, saw recommendations for these chairs in a librarian's face group, uh, Facebook group that I'm part of. Um, several libraries had them and said that they're extremely sturdy. They have held up for many years. And as you can see, the kids can sit on them backwards like they are right now, which is the preferred way I have found out for them to sit in them. <laughs> um, or they can be sent in, in the normal fashion. And our um, youth services department decided on the colors for this. So they, um, they basically got one in every color available to make a really nice and vibrant space for the new room, or for the room. And there's also a thing on the bottom, uh, a shelf to hold their backpacks and books and those sorts of things. So uh, they were really excited to get those. 
We had a car seat event um, a couple weekends ago. We partnered with the Phoenix Children's Hospital for a car seat safety check. Um, it was in the back parking lot of the library over by the MGC. And it was the first time that we've tried an event like this. And they were, um, it was quite a successful event. Over 20 cars came through. And um, if anybody had a car seat that was, um, I don't know what the proper term is, out of date, expired, not, not considered safe anymore, they would uh, replace the car seat for free for that family. And 11 car seats were replaced for free. So it was a, a great event for the families that showed up to that and they got everything checked. It's a, great to have that peace of mind when you have such precious cargo and then to get a great a brand new seat. I'm sure a lot of families were very fortunate and happy about that. All right, I am going to now hand it over to uh, Megan Carbiner, who is on the other side of the room. She is our programming librarian and our outreach supervisor. And um, just let me know as you want me to advance the slides, or do you have a, a clicker over there? I don't think so. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'll go ahead and do that. And um, she's going to tell you about a lot of the adult services um, and outreach uh, programs and events we've had over the last couple of months. Yay, okay, so right now we're in the middle of our winter lecture series, and as you can see, we have a lot of people. Um, the first one on the left is actually Vera, you can see her in the corner. Right back here. Um, she's giving a presentation about the museums of, Ari of Arizona, and I went to um, an outreach event yesterday where I talked to an RV resort, and someone specifically said they really liked Vera's presentation. So um, she had a great turnout, and we haven't had very good numbers for this since COVID. Last year we had, I don't know, I wanna say like 40 people. And in the past we've had you know, around 100. So we've been trying to build it up since COVID and this year we're getting those numbers back. So much so that we are shocked. <laughs> we need to set up more and more chairs. So this was Vera's and I think we had about 100 people. And then the other one, the darker picture, um, we had 150 people for that one. So we're packing the room here. <laughs> but um, that's going really well. And in the numbers from last month, we had over 400 people come to the different lecture series. So um, we're excited that we're having success with that. And uh, next slide, I guess. Um, we also are having, um, we had a charcuterie board basic program. We do our cooking class every month. And a, we had a really good turnout. <coughs> Excuse me for the first um, one that we did, and then a cooking group from Gold Canyon and Apache Junction approached us asking us to do it again. So we did it again, and we had 55 people show up to this program. So that was a really successful pro program for us as well that we're excited about. Next slide. And then these are just a couple other programs that we have going on, um, all about essential oils. We had a good turnout for container gardening in the Southwest Desert, and that's one that the Superstition Master Gardeners put together, and we had 35 people for that, so that was really good. And then our Books and Views Hiking Book Club, which is fun. We're getting that started, and we're trying to get more and more people to come to that. But um, we've had people recently request that we do more programs on Saturdays and on the evenings so that working adults can come. And so these are some of those programs. The essential oils was on an evening uh, during the week and the container gardening was on a Saturday. So we're taking that into consideration as we are having more and more adult programs. Next slide. And then I get to talk to you about our mobile library. So we're seeing a lot of progress and it's really exciting. Um, we just got this new rug, which makes the space really fun. And we're starting to fill it with books, as you can see, and we have colorful bookends, so it is a really inviting space. And the books that you're seeing are, um, we have DVDs up in the corner, and then we have adult fiction and nonfiction on the right side. And then on the left side of the bookmobile, we have um, children's, and young adult books and materials over there. So we're starting to get um, pretty full for 
not totally full, but pretty full, and it's exciting because we have some progress. And then this next slide shows the empty shelves, so that's what we still need to fill that we're working on, and we have books that have been ordered. We have a lot of books from our collections that we've been taking out because we have double copies, or they haven't circulated for a while, so we're now adding them to the bookmobile. And then we have our book return over here as well that we got um, for people to return their books when they come to the bookmobile as well. And um, we're establishing our route as well. So we have a few different places that have agreed to be on our route, and we're still working to get more. Um, but that includes some RV parks. The Rock and Gem Club said that we could park there. Um, we've even had Harley Davidson say we could park there. So that would be fun. Um, as well as different, we're trying to get um, um, Aurora Place has agreed to have us park there, and it's a really good um, place for us to pull up. So we're excited about that one. And we're trying to get some of the schools involved, but we are trying to figure out all the right channels to get them involved. So um, we're going to try to start our route at the beginning of March, and we're going to have a ribbon cutting on March 2nd at 10.30 a.m., so please put that on your calendars. And we're just going to do kind of an informal ribbon cutting and um, have some little giveaways and give people tours. It's a really big tour, so it might take a while. But um, no, just to kind of get people excited about it. So um, we hope you'll all be able to come to that. Yes, and the mayor will be there for mm -hmm. that event as well as um, city management. So uh, will that be? it's going to be just in the parking lot between the library and the MGC. Okay. So. We chose March 2nd as the date because it's the, it's the week before Megan hopes to go out on her first voyage with the van on her route. And also March 2nd is Read Across America Day, also known as Dr. Seuss's birthday. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that um, normally the youth department, the library does an event um, or a special story time. Um, so having the event around 10.30 is kind of perfect because it's kind of in between the two story times, so we might actually get some, some families to check it out as well, and you know we can just celebrate reading and books and <laughs> mobile libraries. Yeah. So if you figure out your route, are you going to post it somewhere on the library itself, and then how many times a week do you think you'll be going out at this time? So... Oh, I forgot about this. Um, oh, okay. I'll, I'm sorry. I'll sorry. keep asking. Oh, no, no, you're fine. Um, so we're planning to have a week every month that's like bookmobile week, and it's going to be the first full week of the month. And so we're going to go to each stop once a month. So they know that I'll be back the first Tuesday at a certain time, whatever we agree to with them, so that it's really consistent. Um, and then we're going to post this everywhere we can. We're going to put it on social media, on our website. Um, I've heard other bookmobiles have kind of big signs that they put up at the places that say like we stop here every second Tuesday so I'll, I'll probably investigate doing something like that but um, and of course part of our agreement with the places is that they will advertise for us as well so we're hoping to get the word out that way okay thank you and I made little like um, invitations that say like our next visit to this stop is, and then I'll like write the day so that I can give those out in case somebody is like stopping by at the end or just wanting information about it. So is we'll keep thinking up more ways to get the word out. But is it like a bookmark? Would it be like a bookmark? We could do a bookmark. Yeah, I just kind of made like a quarter sheet one. But yeah, I could make a bookmark. That would be fun. So good idea. And, and are you still doing the uh, handlebar? the reading we're not doing that right now uh -huh. we do that kind of more um when the winter visitors aren't here because mm -hmm. handlebar is less busy mm -hmm. so it helps get people in the door for them um we do it may through october is what we did last year and we hope to do it again we haven't like definitely talked to them about it but people ask us all the time <laughs> <laughs> so uh we really hope to mm -hmm. so. any other questions Okay, then these are just some of my outreach statistics. Um, I went to the Association of Bookmobile and Outreach Services conference last year, back in October, and so I did a bunch of research about our statistics because I did a presentation. And so um, when we first started kind of getting the mobile library out places um, in 2020, we only had 
nine visits. I should have counted these. Um, but then in 2021, we like doubled that. And then in 2022, we got even more than that. And I think that I calculated it was like 188% increase. So um, we've been doing really good with outreach since getting the mobile library. And um, this year has just started, but a couple of outreach events that I've gone to so far, I've gone to a couple RV parks. And then upcoming, I'll be at the wellness event for Parks and Rec, some more RV parks, Lost Dutchman Days Rodeo, um, Rotary Club, and lots of different things. So we have lots planned for outreach, and we're always looking for new ways to talk to people in the community about the library. Is this just going to be inside the AJ city limits, or are you kind of going to Gold Canyon or Wilton and Domain State even? So for outreach, of like if for me to just go give a presentation, I'll go wherever. Um, I've gone kind of on the other side of Meridian, and I've I recently went, um, which I think this first one, Superstition Sunrise, was over the line, and so I talked to them and gave them all easy access cards. Um, and I've gone to Gold Canyon before, um, but for the bookmobile route that happens every month, we're just sticking in Apache Junction right now. But um, if there's an event that's a one-time thing, I have no problem going there. But just for the really regular amount of time for the bookmobile, we're, we're staying in Apache Junction right now. We're trying to target some specific areas that we know um, are lower income and might have less accessibility to the library. So. Well, and, and I think you've done a phenomenal job in getting the flyers and stuff out, and um, you know we keep them posted at, at the chamber mm -hmm. also. So, and a lot of people are picking up the um, lecture series. So, and and that one sheet that you have that has the adult, mm -hmm. all the adult activities on it is really good, good too. I'm glad those are going over well. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you, Megan. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, some more items for the librarian's report, but they're not on the PowerPoint. One being that we were once again uh, the recipient of um, a generous donation from the Glenn Perkins Educational Foundation. Um, from North Dakota, and this is in honor of Glenn Perkins, who was a winter visitor here in Apache Junction, and he loved our library, loves uh, learning in general, just loves anything to do with literacy. Um, so when he passed, he set up a foundation, and um, in the past five years, we received, I believe it's 20,000 each year since 2017, and this year we received 25,000. Um, so we were thrilled as normal to, to get uh, that lovely donation, and this is a letter that we drafted for the mayor to sign, and that was mailed to him, or excuse me, to the foundation. Um, there's a copy of the letter in your packet. And we plan at this point to use um, the funds for some very well-needed public, new public computers. If you know anything about computers, it's that they often, after a few years, become outdated because new software, new operating systems are coming out and so forth. Uh, so our public computers are nearing the end of life for, um, for their good use, and so we're gonna be in need of getting those replaced. So we're gonna use um, some of the funds to, to uh, do that replacement. And then the rest, uh, we'll see what special projects come up. <laughs> Robin's got ideas, <laughs> books. <laughs> um, another thing that we wanted to report back on is the um, annual, excuse me, not the annual report, the strategic plan. Um, I gave you kind of a rundown at the last meeting of um, the goals that we were, strategies and goals we're working on this year. Um, one that has kind of um, come to life in the last couple of months is uh, what is the first goal and the first strategy of the plan, which was to develop and implement instructional computer, digital device, and creation zone makerspace programs for the community. Um, back in January, we started to offer two uh, classes, one uh, 
excuse me, one class twice a month in our job center, and it's a job help class. We have two of our librarians in there uh, to offer resume job search assistance, and it's just like a walk-in program. Um, Arizona at Work also attends that for additional assistance. Um, so we um, have been trying to advertise that as much as possible, and we've had a few people show up. Um, so hopefully people are listening. If you're needing to update your resume, um, if it's outdated, um, there's lots of new information about resumes and uh, cover letters and interview skills and so forth. Um, another thing that um, we're gonna be offering are some classes that are actually like formal sit-down classes where we have an instructor teach. And our computer lab assistants um, each signed up for a different class to teach. Um, the classes that are gonna be offered um, beginning later this month and then going uh, through March and possibly April are Google search and email, internet basics and basic smartphone photography and editing, and also a class on how to use our library applications. It's called library apps. So that would be um, like Hoopla, uh, Libby, Freegal, and all of those special library apps that we have. So um, this, this was something, once again, that came out of our um, strategic planning process where we did the surveys um, with patrons in the community, we did focus groups, um, and there was a lot of interest on people bringing back those classes. Um, they did fizzle out, obviously, during COVID. Um, so we're excited to be able to offer them again, and we hope we get some good turnouts for those, program, for those programs because um, we know that e-content is always um, getting bigger. Um, the student library cards that we talked about at the last meeting as well were uh, Apache Junction Unified School District um, and the library are in a, uh, an agreement to partner to offer virtual student library cards to all students. It has finally come to, fru to fruition um, it took um, several weeks for us to work with the school district to upload the student data into our circulation system. Uh, it was a lot of IT techie stuff, um, but those um, folks figured it out and the students are now all loaded. They can use their student ID number to access um, all of our electronic databases, all of our digital services, and they can also come to the library um, with their student ID card or number, and they can check out up to three books. Um, this is in addition to if they already have a um, Apache Junction library card. So we're really excited to offer that because um, doing Google searches isn't the preferred way to do research, and we're hoping that we can um, partner with the schools more and offer them some more um, help with teaching kids about credible resources and research skills. Um, since a lot of the schools these days don't have librarians um, to do that, we would be totally willing to offer classes to them and to get them into the library to experience our programs and check out materials. Um, if you were really discerning looking at the January stats, you may have noticed under the new patron statistics, it said new patrons, youth, um, the number of new patrons youth um, in December was 38, and in January it was 2,969. <laughs> so that is where that number came it's from. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it was, that was the, like the 2,900 kids at the school, so the, a, lot, a lot of library cards. Uh, let's see. Um, a shelving update. I told you at the last um, board meeting as well about how we were... Um, uh, had a request for proposals um, with the city to uh, get um, shelving vendors to submit their proposals for us to get new shelving in the north wing, which is the room you walk through to get back to that large program room. Um, a vendor has been selected. However, we are not to the point yet where we can announce who the vendor is. Um, but soon we will um, have that completed. We'll be able to um, have a date on when installation is uh, gonna be scheduled to take place um, after the city council approves that process. 
and the funding for that um, project is from the 2021 American Rescue Plan Act funds. The Friends of the Library are having a ginormous book sale coming soon, February 22nd through February 27th, and that's also going to be in our North Wing program room. They want to clear out the back room and start fresh, and to do that, they are offering buy one, get one free materials. Um, so come and look those days. Um, they'll be back there when the library's open, 9 to 8, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5, Friday and Saturday. So you might find some hidden gems in there, and you'll get to uh, uh, meet and greet with our Friends of the Library volunteers. And uh, just a reminder, it's cash only, so go to the bank before you come to the book sale. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, AARP is once again at the library doing free tax preparation. This year, they um, decided to not offer appointments, um, appointment signups until January 17th, which was the day after Martin Luther King Day. Um, normally, we start taking uh, reservations the day that we open for the new year. This year, they asked us to wait a couple weeks, so we were getting a ton of phone calls all through the beginning of January, and we're like, wait till the 17th, wait till the 17th. Well, the 17th came, and it was, <laughs> it was, it was a little nuts. <laughs> we had about 200 to 300 voicemails that we had to answer. People calling when when we were on the phone with other people. We had a couple different phone lines going. Um, and that first day, out of 660 appointments, we filled 500 in the first day. Wow. So our staff were amazing. They just took it like champs, and um, by the third day of that week, the appointments were all filled. So we're really pleased that everybody knows about that service, and we are hoping that when they come to the library, we can teach them about other services that we have to offer. Um, they have announced, um, I believe it was yesterday, that they are going to be adding five additional appointments on to um, remaining days for this tax season. My, uh, Wednesday through Friday. They're not going to be offering extra appointments on Saturdays. So there are five additional slots each day that people can now call in and try to get um, one of those last minute appointments. So all in all, that will make, um, I didn't do the math. It was originally 660 appointments. Now it's going to be like 750 or 800. So. so that is it for my librarian's report. Thank you. What's the right. question on the shelving? Is it going to be able to be moved around or not? We have requested uh, casters, um, and that is um, something that the vendor does offer. We're waiting, um, we're waiting to get a revised quote back because um, when we met with them, there were some um, adjustments that we needed to make and some additional items, such as the casters that we wanted to add onto the quote. So. Um, I'm waiting for the um, revised quote to come in, and then when that happens, um, and we've made our decisions on different end cap styles and different types of design, then we will go to council for approval. Okay. And those are coming out of the ARA funds? Art fund, yep. Mm -hmm. Are, are any of the classes? No other questions. Yeah. Are, are any of the classes um, that you offer? Can any of the high school students earn credits for any for taking any of them? For any of our in-person classes? Well, not the in-person, but the well. Um, I'm thinking of some of the uh, universal classes or. You know, that kind of thing? Yes, there is a way that they can apply for con continuing education credit. Or, um, or it else. details that process um, on the app or in the website. Um, I don't have that handy right now, but yes, there is a way that um, they can get college credit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. All right, that was quite a report. Um, <laughs> A lot of really good stuff. Your staff is to be 
we, I think the entire board would say your staff is doing an excellent job and you're doing an excellent job as well. Thank you. All right, um, we have no old business on the agenda. Um, we do have something on the new business, 23047 discussion and update on strategies to promote library services. Yes, thank you. Um, at the last board meeting, um, during the request for future agenda items, it was um, requested that we once again have a discussion on strategies to promote library services, which would be advertising and marketing. Um, so on the screen, I have um, uh, several slides that will go over current things that we are have in place and are implementing um, for that purpose. And then the future slides will show things that we've tried that we're not really sure how they worked. And then we'll have another slide that'll show some things that we are planning on trying. And then I think that'll give you a great idea of where we are. And then um, if we wanna have a discussion at that point on any few, uh, other ideas, or, um, then that can happen. So currently um, for marketing and advertising methods, um, we have this list here. We're posting on the city marquee. We have our month or monthly paper event calendars, which um, we offer to the public. Um, they're on our website. They can be printed from the website. They're in full color, or people can just refer to them. Um, we also set calendars aside for the chamber. Um, Judy will come pick those up. And also for Head Start, they come pick them up monthly as well. Um, we have paper and electronic calendars and flyers shared to the Apache Junction Unified School District um, for digital distribution on Peach Jar, which is their digital flyer app. And we don't always do paper calendars to the schools just because there's so many. Um, but we did it a couple months, right, Megan? Mm -hmm. Was it like back during the holidays? Yeah, and like summer. And when summer. we had summer okay. reading. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our Wowbrary program or uh, newsletter. Um, this is a newsletter where uh, patrons can self-subscribe or we can subscribe on their behalf to get an emailed newsletter each week that highlights all of the new materials that we've received in that past week, everything from DVDs, audiobooks, regular books, large print, um, and it's a, um, if you've been on uh, Facebook, you've probably seen them. You can actually click on the item and, you can, and it takes you to the catalog where you can actually place a, a hold on the item or get further information about the materials. Um, we have our programs and or event newsletter. Um, this is something that Megan started for us and I believe at last count we were at 568 subscribers. Um, so this is also a bi-weekly emailed newsletter that highlights um, our events, not every event, but highlights our bigger events, both for adults and children. Um, the last thing on the newsletter is always about how to get a library card or how to renew your library card. Um, what other things have you had on there? I like feature a resource like universal class or... Yep. Um, you know, signing up for different things, but I feature like a library resource every time. Like when we opened our studio, I talked about that. So something new that's a resource for them. Right. Um, every time I, we get a new patron into the library and they get a library card, we give them an informational brochure, which is always changing because we always are getting new products um, or information's changing about circulation and whatnot. We have two QI brochure. Um, one of them leads to the library newsletter and the other one leads you to the event newsletter so people can also sign up for them on their own. We have um, really enjoyed working with Super Superstition Living Magazine. Um, every month they um, pick up our staff picks which are picks from our staff on different um, books, audio books um, that are within, that have been published within the last year and we have a display near the circulation desk that highlights those items. Um, and we have quite a number of people 
that um, look at that web page too. We have a staff picks web page because um, these are all ones that librarians are recommending. We have um, started um, including items in the new welcome wagon bags that the city has started, and these are going out to new communities. So far, I believe they did, was it Lenore? Lenar? I'm not sure. Uh, well, yeah, at the end of last year, they did one welcome wagon bag distribution, and I think it was about 300 bags. Mm -hmm. And what did we put in, the, in those that time? Um, we put, we made like a little flyer that said our menu of services. So it said everything that we do at the library and it looked like a cute little menu. And then um, little chip clips that have our logo on them and say our website address on them. Okay. I think that was everything. Right. And then um, we just ordered some new promotional items and they are magnifier, bookmark, something else yeah. they have like three <laughs> uses yeah it was just a bookmark and it's a magnifier i think it has like a ruler on the side maybe it's maybe a ruler not. okay and it has our logo and says apache junction Public yeah. library so. so yeah so um for the welcome wagon bags it's just to let people know we're here to kind of highlight all of the free stuff at least the way that we were um approaching it rather than we don't want to throw in the the new patron brochure and inundate them with, you can check out 30 items at a time. We just first wanna get them in the door. So um, the menu was really a cute idea. Um, I'm not an Instagram person, cause I'm too old, but <laughs> Megan is. <laughs> and Megan has made what are called Instagram reels and they're like mini videos. And um, they take, the bad thing about them is they take a little bit of time to create but how many views did you have on that one? Was it like 4,000? I'll look. <laughs> You'll look. Yeah, I think so. Um, the cool thing about them is they're very um, like trend-based. So anybody can see them. Like if they, they just will appear on their screen um, if they're interested in some of the content it has to do with. And so we get a lot of reach. Um, one of them had 3,000 views. One of them had 7,000 views. What was that one on? Um, there's two different ones. There was one that was like us having like library confessions. Like I checked out a book club kit and didn't bring it to book club. And so it was like our <laughs> staff having like confessions. Like they checked out 10 books and never read them or something, you know. And it was cute. And then there was another one that was 7,000 views and it was a pretty cover book challenge. So we had one for like every color of the rainbow that had a pretty color. Um, We've had other ones that have had 2,000. There was one that was 4,000 when I was a puffer fish and for, um, <laughs> for summer reading. Yeah, So that, that was, was a really favorite. good one, yeah. <laughs> but uh, they get thousands of views. So we want to try to create more of those because they really give us exposure to people who might not see us any other way. And a lot of younger people watch them. So we want to do more of those, but we have to make that time on our schedule. Uh, yeah, they do take up. <laughs> They do take a lot of planning and time. Yeah. Uh, Facebook posts and Facebook events, we've been doing that for quite a, quite a while now. Um, HOA presentations, which uh, Megan goes to the majority of those and represents the library and tells them about everything that we have going on. And then we have our in-house, uh, what we call kiosks. Um, there is one by the, there's actually right now two at the, near the circul circulation desk. They're across from each other. When the North Wing um, shelving project takes place, we're hoping there'll be an area in the North Wing where we can move one of the kiosks. And it's just, um, Sansi actually makes the slides for one of them, and it just, it's slides of our different events going on, our different resources, and it's just like a loop. Um, the other one is a touch screen, and you can actually interact with it. Um, so we have stuff on there about like Tom Collinborn, um, about the history of Apache Junction, mm -hmm. about our events. Um, resources, everything, but it's, um, I, I often, when I'm working the service desk, I'll see people walk by and, you know, they'll stop and, and watch the, the, the slides go through. So those are um, some of the bigger things that we're currently doing. You would think that would be enough, <laughs> but um, these are a couple things that we tried in the past. We really don't know exactly what the results were of them because they're kind of hard to measure, but we didn't feel like they were um, extremely successful. One was sharing um, um, some of our library events on the kiosk over at the MGC. 
Um, we did that with them back and forth a few times. It's kind of hard to, to gauge if people saw that or not, unless we're asking them at programs, where did you hear about this? Um, and then the other one are Facebook ads. Those are ones that you pay for. You can determine um, a geographic area that you want the ad to go to. You can say demographics, like I want to attract women the ages of 30 to 60, and you make an ad and it'll, they have some algorithm that'll send it to those people. I don't, I don't exactly understand it totally, um, but that does cost every time um, that, it, that it happens. Um, and we can see how many people like clicked on it or looked at it, and the, the, this data was a little on the low side, I thought. Mm -hmm. But it could also be the things that, the ads that we put on there at the time, so. And ideas we're unsure of. So I was in charge of looking at a couple of different things. One, um, we always talk about the citizen. Um, if you've been in Apache Junction for a while, you might remember there was like a separate newspaper called The Citizen that was just chock full of parks and recreation and library and, and it, there was even a page for the police department on the back. Um, it was just a separate uh, newspaper insert that went to all households and then during COVID, it went away. Um, the Independent does have the citizen in a very shorter, smaller version in the newspaper, but it's dedicated just to MGC materials. Um, I did inquire about, what about having some library materials in there? And they, their response was, we can't dedicate any more free space in our paper to the city. Hmm. So. Um, that's where we were with that one, and um, but we understood um, from Parks and Rec that the citizen was supposedly going to be coming back, and f at this point we're still unsure um, what that's going to look like or if that's going to involve actually some budgeting on the behalf of the departments that have their events in it. So as I get more information on that, I will let you know, but um, our public information officer um, has been looking into that and we're hoping to get some more info. And the other one that was brought up in the past was um, the Ring Doorbell app. If you have a Ring Doorbell, there's a section on it that says, I should, I should have looked at it before I came, it says events or is in the top left, it says events around you or, I, I have a Ring Doorbell so I look at those and I've looked at the ones for the Apache Junction area. The only events they have on there are um, you can't, you can't like put flyers or anything on there. All you can do is write text and it's mostly lost animals mm. or, um, uh, thefts. <laughs> mm. So I don't think that's going to be a place where we can really do any advertising. There is a community resources section, but that was, um, specific resources that must be paying, um, they were like state funded, um, resources, they weren't like local resources. Mm. Okay, so th these were a couple things that have come up in past conversation on ideas that we are planning on trying. We are working on some of them already. Um, Cheryl um, Hall, um, one of the ones that um, she talked about quite a lot last year was adding a poll um, to our website. And in speaking with Megan and the other Megan that works at the library who are the prime people that do our website, we didn't feel like the poll on the website was the best place to put it, but we do like the idea of a poll because it brings interaction to, um, to the news that you're bringing people. It gets them to, to engage. Our idea is to add the poll to our biweekly programs newsletter, the one that Megan makes, which currently has, well, 568 subscribers. Um, is that something that you are planning on starting next month to just see what kind of interaction it might bring? Yeah, I, I sent one out this week and I honestly forgot. So I oh, did okay. not add one. <laughs> okay, and I even looked but at it and I, was it at the top? I can put it anywhere. I okay. can put it at the bottom, at the top, in the middle. So that is something that I want to do. There's a specific section of it where 
I can add a poll and it's really easy. Okay. So um, I'm planning to do that. I'll probably do it on the next one. Okay. And we also talked about doing Instagram stories. You can do a poll on there too, and that's really easy and kind of a fun way to get people to interact. So we might look into doing something like that. Too. Okay. Um, Megan actually did this yesterday or today, adding a QR code to um, that leads to one of our newsletters and putting that QR code on our self-check machines. And I think somebody had that idea last time. It might have been Judy. Does that sound familiar? I don't remember if it was me or not. <laughs> it was somebody. Because <laughs> I'm not techie. <laughs> so <laughs> it's probably not me. <laughs> but So uh, today, um, if you can see this picture down here, it says subscribe in the bottom uh, left corner of one of our self-check right. machines. And then it has some text. And I, whoops. See, I'm not techie either. <laughs> I can't even do a PowerPoint. Um, and it says subscribe. And this one goes to the program's new newsletter, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to, um, there's no way to track where people are, are mm -hmm. where they're snapping the QR code, right? No, I can tell, like, if we've signed them up or if they've done it themselves. Okay. So, but it leads, it's the same link as our website, so we can't really tell where they're getting to it, but I can tell if they are choosing to do it um, rather than me inputting their information or something. Okay. Um, class Dojo. Um, this is something Vivian brought up. Um, it's a communication app that is used at Avalon School. Um, we actually reached out last week to um, one of the administrators there, and they were quite open to letting us um, send them information to put on the app. Um, I did send information, but since I'm not part of the Avalon School, I don't know if it actually got added. So if anyone has, I think Vivian does, has a child that goes there. So if anyone has a class dojo communication with Avalon, let me know if you saw anything about the library. Um, Nextdoor. So Nextdoor is another social media platform that is supposed to talk about community, um, anything going on in your local community. Um, I have posted on there before. We actually have, we have a business Nextdoor account, which has a, f uh, it allows you to, to post, I think, twice a month for free. But then after that, you have to do ads like they do on Facebook, where you have to pay, and you have to um, create your ad, and then say, I'm going to spend $3 a day sending this out, and then you, you say how long you want it to go, and so forth. It's a little, it's a little cumbersome. Um, so it's something that I think might be worth trying, just because. Well, things like your um, sale, you know, book sale. Yeah. Could go on that. Yeah. So like maybe that. that would be a good one to try next week. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she's my. She's yeah. She's the techie one. So I'm like, I, I'll give you the idea, and you can do it. Maybe uh, some <laughs> classes in how to become a techie would be good. <laughs> so, I can do to a certain point, and then I'm just like, okay. Well, you know, I'm going to give this to the experts. Well, you know, like the citizenship and leadership program that you have to attend so many, and then you get a punch card that says you, you know, you're a techie. You, know, <laughs> you graduate. <laughs> yeah, we should do that. <laughs> um, number five: short marketing videos for our website and social media. Um, we did a short marketing video. Actually, Sansi was in on that one. We did how to use a hotspot. Oh, how to use a hotspot. How to use a hotspot. Mm -hmm. And it went, is it, it's on the website and on social, and it was on social media, right? Mm -hmm. Our YouTube channel and on social media. And on YouTube, okay. And there's a link on the website, yeah. Okay. We don't have any uh, data on how many people viewed that, do we? I can look. <laughs> 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 Hold on. Sorry. No, no, yeah. no. So we're thinking that might be a good, um, a good avenue for things like universal class, for uh, Brain Fuse, which is um, the tutoring program that's um, free for students to get live tutors. Because um, when people can see it, then they're going to be more apt to, mm -hmm. to try it out. Um, and the last one, which I'm really excited about, um, and I didn't know it could do this, and I'm a little embarrassed because I'm the librarian, I'm supposed to know this, but we have a database called Data Axle, and it used to be called Reference USA. 
And what it's used for is mostly for um, entrepre entrepreneurs to market. You can get all sorts of business information on there. You can look up different, um, uh, what's the word, different company, uh, types of companies, and you can get like their mailing address. You can find out who their contact information is. It's, um, so it's, it's one that we have available to us in the library, but I didn't know that you can actually also find on there new residents that have moved into um, your zip code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Megan Sparks, who's one of our senior library assistants, she knew it. So she's like, well, let me go on there and let me see what, what, what I can find. So she went on there and she found something like in the last month, there was like 100 people that said had moved into Apache Junction. I don't know if she did by zip code, but she had like a, um, a list of, of their names and their mailing addresses. Um, so she made a prototype and we haven't done it yet, but she made um, a postcard. So on one side it says, welcome to the neighborhood. We'd love to see you at the library. Are you interested in a library card? Bring this postcard and a photo ID because this postcard will serve as their proof of address in case they haven't gotten their driver's license changed yet. And then on the other side, it'll have their, um, their address, obviously. And then she made this um, word jumble of all like the different services and products and, and things we have. So we definitely want to try that out for, a, for the price of a postcard. It's definitely worth it. We send out postcards every day anyway for um, address verification for those that need it. Um, so yeah, I was, I was really, really stoked about that one. And that's Data Axle? It's called Data Axle, yeah. Um, it was known as Reference USA forever, and um, now it's Data Axle, so. And she did it so quick. <laughs> Um, the video had about 200 views, so about the Wi-Fi hotspot. About the Wi-Fi hotspot, mm -hmm. okay, oh, okay. So, and did was another one made recently, or, or am I um, dreaming? We made like a little program one about books and views. We had like a little promotional video of us with Parks and Rec. That okay. was fun. Okay. Um, those are the only ones I can think of right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we've talked about doing other ones. We just haven't done them yet. Mm -hmm. So that is where we are right now. Um, so hopefully this can lead into some discussion on your end on other ideas or direction to go or. I just, God, how many librarians do you have <laughs> to do all these things? Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it does take a lot of time and. Tremendous amount of time. And, and it's not like Megan doesn't have enough things to do. <laughs> But we just keep throwing other things on her, which you got to be careful. I don't want to give her too much, but she's, you know, with the, with the mobile library and her awesome programs and then giving her this stuff, too. So, yeah, it's definitely, um, it takes time. And like I said, um, our, we have a couple other people on staff that are, that are good at this stuff, too. But, um, yeah, I know it does take a lot of time. Well, and it's a creative mind, you know, you have a creative mind. I think the um, wall library is such an asset because a lot of people who don't go on Facebook uh, Instagram. or Instagram or whatever, when you sign up for wild, wild library, you get it whether you want it or not. And it's a wealth of information. Yeah, And, and then at the bottom, it gives you all these alternatives. Mm -hmm. I think it's very effective. That's great, and, and it's attractive. And we used to have a widget on our website with Wildberry, but I think that got t taken off at one point. Yeah, we have one like on the children's page of like children, new children's books that have been added. Um, I think that might be the only one we have right now though. But there's several um, community members on Facebook that will share Wildberry into their groups that they administer. So, I mean, I know some of the names, I'm not gonna say them right now, but um, yeah, so I'm very thankful that they do that um, to spread the word and hopefully people are, are clicking on them. And we do have, we can look at the stats on that too. And I know we, we have recently and they're, they're quite good. Mm -hmm. So not many people, um, not many people unsubscribe, the ones that do subscribe and get it in their email, so. I look forward to it. Oh, good. I'm glad. I wondered, too, about the, you had mentioned volunteers that speak to the HOA, uh, different HOAs throughout the uh, community. 
are those volunteers from the library that do that? Or do you it's need volunteers <laughs> to it's do Megan. that? It's the city Megan. program. Yeah, it's a city program, so we get information from um, our public information officer when those are coming up, and they'll send out a, a, an invite, and then I forward them on to Megan since she's the outreach librarian, so that's what she does, <laughs> and she's good at it. So, sounds like, but yeah, so we don't use volunteers; we use staff because oh, who's I best see. to yeah who's best to talk about the library than except for you, um, <laughs> than somebody that works there. Okay. Yeah. It's an informational program. That's in the good. City. Okay. Yeah, so there'll be like a representative from every department, like the police chief will be there and sometimes um, the lawyer will be there, the yeah, city attorney, the, yeah, so the uh, parks and rec, good. yeah. So it's, it's, it's mostly winter visitors and yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Have you reached out to any other charter schools about doing their class dojo and having access or being able to put stuff on theirs also? Do others have it? Do you know? Well, I'm, I know Imagine on a Mesa, that's how they do theirs. Imagine Superstition or just Imagine Mesa? Or don't, not sure, but, but just to, just to. The grade school one there. The okay. Southern, but I'm assuming probably more of the schools use that, so that might be an option if they have it, see if we can use it. Okay. And then, this is going to sound horrible, but I'm putting it out there anyways. Um, I went to an event and I went to the bathroom to go do my business and on the back of the door when you sit there they have their whole schedule and what's coming up. <laughs> and by saying that, is there any way we could do that like in the stalls in the bathroom at the park? Work something with the maintenance department or something? Just do it once a month but then I'm just worried about vandalism but if we do just our normal sheet and just put it there and then at the bottom if you want to see more the address to the library or whatever, okay. just as an option. So I wouldn't want to do that and step on Park's toes, be like, you're in the park, I but I want you to come to the library. But um, right maybe it's, yeah, but maybe it's something to do in partnership. That's yeah, I'm right. not sure how they would feel about if they're, yeah. If, or even but do some it there sort of, and, you know, both of them, you know, just something. Okay. That way people are aware, because they have tons of events all the time, too. You know, here's our library. Why are you here? Walk across the street or park and rec or vice versa. <laughs> And I guess it would be a little repetitive if they were already at the library, but we could do it in our bathroom too, because I mean they're sitting there, so they might <laughs> see they might see an event that they're interested in that they might not go look at the calendar another time. Or they might not even know about the calendar. At yeah. Point too. Yeah. I don't know. It's a thought. I just thought it was funny because <laughs> I'm like I'm sitting I'm like it's right there, and I mean everybody always reads something when they're sitting around, so. <laughs> it's very true. It's <laughs> Yes, it is. It's a good idea. You know, I go to the M, uh, the multi gen center every week several times. I never see anything about the library. Really? Okay. They usually have that one table right next to the yoga studio that used to have stuff yeah. in it. Yeah. They have that whole table. And then there's one on the wall that usually will rotate through. But I never see anything on the library there, and I stop and read it every Not day. For a while there, there was some, but I didn't. I just sent an image over today about our hiking book club that we do in partnership with them and she told me she put it on there so we're trying but they have so many things going on yes, mm -hmm. that you probably have to sit there and like watch it for a while um, but anytime I've tried to bring physical copies of things over they really don't want them oh. they, enough of their own yeah <laughs> they just have a lot of stuff and they don't have a lot of places to set like papers so they're they just aren't really that interested mm. but they have bathrooms <laughs> <laughs> Every bathroom we go into now, we'll just. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could the put city. theirs in the library if they would put ours in the multi chan. There you go. Do a swap. <laughs> Communication. <laughs> Works for me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl, we haven't heard from you. We well, you had um, already kind of referred to the, the next door one, which was the one I was thinking of until I looked at the last, you know, the last couple of pages. Like, oh, yeah, we talked about that already. Um, okay. But I will tell you that there is, um, I know you, you talked about having a business version of that. There is somebody who just po posts, here's the upcoming events in your area, um, and I see that all the time for AJ. So 
somebody is out there doing a public service to promote things that maybe we could get into his or her list. Um, I do not know who that person is, but I see that post come up every couple of weeks and it has upcoming events that might be of interest to people. So okay. that might also be a way of maybe getting around having to pay for an ad. Okay. Yeah. If you can find that out, cause I, yeah. I don't know if it's because I don't live in AJ, but I can't even see, I can't see anything when I'm on there. So I can only you see be, where I live. You have to be assigned to a specific um, area code and, or I'm sorry, um, a zip code. Yeah. And it will it will kind of bound you in a certain regional area yeah. saying, Okay, you're you're in this spot, so I'm gonna give you your zip code and maybe a couple around you. Okay. I would say some miles and miles and miles streets I've never heard of. <laughs> Cities I've never heard of, you know. Okay, so we'll we'll look at next door more and then try to find out who's the the community sharer. I will tell you that I have worked for several large corporations that used the bathroom newsletter as a very effective way of just telling people what was happening in the in the site. So it works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Now we have to go find the bathroom. <laughs> go, go to Walmart. Uh, no. no. <laughs> Lord knows what will get written on it. I think that you have an extraordinarily comprehensive list of possibilities, mm -hmm. enough to keep anybody busy for a while. Um, I really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, if you're inundated with too much, it becomes overwhelming. And right now you've got six really interesting new ideas plus the bathroom wall i mean <laughs> heck, can't beat it right <laughs> so seems to me that's a really great place to start and maybe in six months or so a little report how did this work how did that work um, do you want to throw that one out or maybe at that point somebody brilliant up here not me We'll come up with some really great idea. On your poll, Megan, we found when we had the newspaper that the poll couldn't be any more than three or four questions. Okay. After that, we got nothing. People just went. Mm. Yeah, I was kind of thinking of just one, just one something fun. One question a week or every mm -hmm. two weeks would be just tippy top. We went to two. Okay. And that worked, but it just got to be a mess otherwise. And it has to be something very Very specific. specific. Mm -hmm. You can't have an open-ended question. Right, right. But something that everybody can kind of relate to. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we, we were thinking about coming up a, 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 with a list of questions just so we would have them at the ready. Mm -hmm. So... We do, every Tuesday, we post, like, something about Arizona trivia on our social mm -hmm. media. Mm -hmm. So we thought maybe we could use some of that to make some poll questions, too. So, yeah, that's a good idea. All right. Well, I know, too, it's, it's hard to sit here under these lights and think of new ideas, especially just after going over all of these ones that we've tried and ones that we want to try. So... It's something you kind of have to marinate on for a little bit, but I like the idea of, you know, we did identify some that we believe we can hopefully successfully implement semi-easily with our techie people. And uh, like you said, see what kind of results we get and tweak it from there. Are we, are we out of ideas now? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard to tell when you're not when you're not in the room. Yeah, yeah, I, I think we are. There's a lot of, kind of there's a lot of blank blank stares. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll interpret. Well, I mean, for you, I, I, I have to say that <laughs> we're just sort of staring now. We're like, okay, now what do we do? <laughs> All right. 
but I mean, you 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 are really plumbing the the um, depth of what we could potentially do um, to increase traffic, and you're seeing an increase in traffic. So, um, partly that may be pandemic, re, you know, recovery from the pandemic, but. I, I suspect that a lot of it has to do with the outreach that, that you're already achieving and many of the paths that you're already taking in order to let uh, patrons know about about the library and what, what you offer. So I feel like you may be seeing some of that in the big bumps that you see month to month in, um, in patron visits, et cetera. So I think, you're doing, I think you're doing a really good job trying to get the word out. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any? You're very welcome. Um, are there any future items, uh, future agenda items? Looks like a no. Okay. Well, then I would like to adjourn this meeting at 7:41 p.m. <laughs>